a, a real exciting mission. Uh, you know, as we were talking about earlier, the uh, Japanese pressurized module or JPM is uh, a, a massive payload that'll be uh, carried up. It's the uh, this is the second of three flights that will be carrying up parts uh, to assemble the uh, the Japanese experiment module. And uh, this is obviously the largest one on STS-123. Back in March, they took up a Japanese logistics module, which is in a temporary uh, position on top of Node 2, Harmony. And uh, once Aki Hoshide um, grabs the JPM out of the shuttle's payload bay, he'll be using the station robotic arm, and he will be the one who will then uh, berth it onto the uh, port or left side of the Harmony module, and then they later in the flight will move the logistics module over to the, the top side of that. And here you can see Commander Mark Kelly. He's uh, going to be climbing into his harness here shortly. And they are now, as you mentioned a minute ago, the uh, what's known as the white room. It uh, is indeed actually white. It is. <laughs> it's nice when things make sense like that. Yeah, and you can see helping out uh, Mark, uh, wearing number four there in the back, is Rene Ariens. He's one of our hatch techs and uh, also helps the astronauts to suit up. Wearing number three, who just walked by, is the other insertion tech. I mentioned Ray Cuevas before. John Hazelhurst will be doing the, uh, uh, helping the flight deck to strap in today. So he'll be the, up there uh, on the flight deck with Mark as he climbs in. And right in front of us, wearing the number six from NASA safety, is Jack Burrett. And it's pretty much uh, standard that the commander of the flight will go into the shuttle first. And yeah, actually, the the commander will climb in. He'll go to the his position in the front left of the flight deck, and uh, and then um, we're going to have coming in on the the mid deck first will be Greg Shamatov, and uh, he will strap in on the far right side, the opposite side from the hatch. So they actually can be strapping in one person on the flight deck, one person on the mid deck. Makes it a little bit more efficient. Right. There you can see Kay Heyer in the background. She's up, uh, looks like, on the flight deck preparing some of the flight data file, um, the checklists that we use, and she's Velcroing one of them there to the side of the center console. Kay is uh, an astronaut from the class of 1998, and she flew on STS-90, and she's what we call um, the lead ASP or astronaut support personnel for this mission. She'll be assisting with the strap-in as well. On a personal note, uh, Mark Kelly is his, uh, family is celebrating a birthday. His uh, father's yeah. birthday today, as a matter of fact. I and, saw uh, that. It's a, I know he's back in uh, actually in Houston. It's uh, it's not a bad present to give your dad to go on your third, your first commander flight and uh, yes. third space flight. That's not bad. Got to be one proud father with uh, two sons who are both shuttle commanders. Uh, yeah, great birthday present for him and happy birthday to Mr. Kelly. Hmm. This is, as you mentioned, this is uh, Dr. Shamatov's uh, PhD in, in aeronautics and astronautics, from uh, actually from MIT. He, uh, this is uh, his first flight, and it's a heck of a way to start your your first flight that lasts for six months. Hey. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, got to be very exciting for him, and uh, he'll be coming back on STS-126. Um, Spatial Endeavor when it flies uh, November 10th. That's right. It's targeted launch date. So Greg has done a lot of training over in Russia as a uh, International Space Station crew member. And uh, Garrett Reisman, who went up in March on STS-123, um, will take his seat back on Discovery when they come home in 14 days. And Greg will, will remain up there as another member of, the, of Expedition 17 as the uh, flight engineer and science officer. And really after uh, the STS-124 mission, Discovery's flight, uh, Really, at that point, since the Hubble telescope mission will take place in uh, October, targeted for t October 8th, we don't uh, have another shuttle flight until, like I said, November, and this is when uh, the space station program has been talking about. This is a time for uh, us to ramp up and get ready to expand from a three-person crew complement that we have on board the station to a six-person crew next year. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, 
you know, when we get to six-person crew and with all the laboratories up there, I think, uh, you know, it's just going to be a real exciting time to see the experiments that are going to be able to be performed. And uh, obviously with three people, you keep them fairly busy maintaining the ship. And uh, six people is going to allow some more margin to uh, have people performing science and experiments on board. And as a matter of fact, Shamatov has been preparing for uh, a lot of his job will be related to getting the station ready uh, for the six-person six crew. And honestly, one of the things that the space station does uh, as well as the, is the science portion you were talking about, but uh, even maintaining the, the, uh, the spacecraft is, is actually a large part of what we're learning on board the International Space Station. Absolutely. There's Greg Waven as he gets ready to, to climb in. And, yeah, that's right, Allard. Uh, you know, really um, just operating a vehicle of the size and complexity of the International Space Station, we're learning a tremendous amount that's going to carry over into the Constellation program. Um, you know, the ultimate goal is to, to get to the moon and beyond the moon to Mars and, and hopefully out into our solar system, continue to explore. And, uh, and so we need to learn how to be able to, to operate in, in for long durations. And there's a lot we're learning about the human body as well as uh, about the vehicles and what we need in those vehicles, radiation hardening, for example, to protect the crew members. Um, and uh, it's gotten a lot of press recently. Even something, you know, as seemingly mundane as a toilet can be a, a huge issue on a long mission like one to Mars would be. And uh, what Colonel Dutton is referring to is the uh, International Space Station uh, started last week, had a problem with its... Uh, it's a toilet system. It's partially working, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, just a couple of days ago, we had some parts hand-delivered from Russia, from the Russian Space Agency, hand-delivered uh, to us here at the Kennedy Space Center and was uh, loaded onto the mid-deck of Discovery to take up. So I guess if um, you had to have a problem with, uh, <laughs> with, your, with your bathroom, I guess it's good that you're going to have uh, a, a supply run basically coming right before it. Yeah, the timing in that respect was, was actually pretty fortunate. And there you can see Greg climbing into the uh, the furthest seat over to the starboard side, the right side of the uh, mid deck. This is shuttle launch control at T minus one hour thirty five minutes and forty five seconds. Launch controllers are not working any issues right now that would prevent us from lifting off at 5.02 p.m. to start the STS-126 mission, Space Shuttle Discovery, and its seven astronauts who have been, uh, you've been listening to some of their communication checks. CDR, loud and clear. CLT, loud and clear. I read you loud and clear. Also configure for air-to-air. -air. Those are voice checks for the commander and the pilot. Discovery Houston for CDR and PLT. Com check on air to air. CDR, loud and clear. PLT, loud and clear. Read you out loud and clear. Also, Mark and Ken, uh, configure for SIMO voice check. Yes, ma'am. 212, go. Yes, sir. You've uh, got your closeout configuration and work for the crew module there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we are pretty much complete with the exception of a couple things that the AF will be bringing with her. Okay. And i got a couple steps uh, still open for her, so um, we're in great shape as far as our timeline at this time for you. Thank you. 37, I can give you hatches closed and latch for flight, ready for cabin leak check. All right, and at a 27.200, you can give me step uh, 765. 765, I was just turning to it, yes, ma'am. All right. And the official call to the hatch. Ready for step 766? That's fine. That the hatch is actually closed? cdr stand by to perform cabin leak check. Master alarm and lights will come on as a function of high cabin pressure. I can't see that. Cabin, we are standing by. Cabin cracks 